Hey everyone, it's Autumn. Today we are going to try out the new Patrick Ta foundation. So I went a little bit crazy. You've probably seen in my recent haul video, which I will leave up here. I purchased a ton of foundations and I was curious about this one because it is a cream foundation, but it also has a powder in it. And I thought the typical thing, I always think, well, that'll be perfect for travel. <laughs> but anyway, I've been loving cream and like stick foundations recently. So I thought I would pick this one up. And I was thinking to myself this morning as I was getting ready to film this video, I'm like, I'm going to be really organized and I'm going to look at the claims of this foundation. And I went to the Sephora website and I looked them up. And unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to like this foundation. And I'll explain why. I noticed this morning that this is for oily, combo, or normal skin. Many of you know I have dry skin. Um, my skin doesn't look too dry now because when I read that, I immediately went and did my skincare this morning and I made sure to put on extra moisturizer. I even put on some face oil and then I let it sit um, to where my skin might be prepped well enough for this foundation. It says it's good for pores, which I'm assuming they mean pore filling, natural finish, pressed powder formula, cream formula, medium coverage. So that's all that good stuff they say. It's kind of funny because in the questions, the, like, the top question on the Sephora website is, what type of primer should be used with this foundation? I have dry skin. And <laughs> the person who answered who apparently is a Sephora employee, I'm not sure what is up. Um, I'll have it here on the screen, but there's like 20%, like percent 20 in between each word. But it says any hydrating primer will work best for your skin type and with this foundation. So, and that's from Sean, who is a pro, who essentially says, if you've hydrated your skin, you should be good. So I used, I'll show you. <laughs> so to hydrate my skin, I used a little bit of this Vichy 89, this is a hyaluronic acid serum. And then I went in with the Superfood Air Whip Moisture Cream. And then I let that sit for a few minutes and then I went in with a Beauty Pie Super Active Capsule, which I find that this almost has like a silicone type feel that allows things to kind of slip over the face. And then I waited, let that sink in, and then I added in a couple of drops of this Peach and Lily uh, Pure Beam Luxe Oil. So all of that is on my face. It's been sitting there for about a half hour. I painted my nails and I was ready to do this. Um, so I just found that interesting and I wanted to point that out if you are somebody with kind of drier skin like me that loves a cream foundation because it typically wears really well on dry skin. This one, I haven't touched it yet, but it's, I'm guessing it's going to be like a silicone sort of uh, texture that dries to a powder. I'm not sure, but that's just kind of what I'm guessing. But if it did, why would they include the powder? Again, I have no idea. They suggest that you use their dual ended brush. And I looked at what the brush appeared to look like and I have kind of two brushes that are similar. So I am just going to use my Zoeva 110 face shape and then also my Jessup 105 Luxe highlight. It's a highlight brush, but I use this, I don't use it for highlight most of the time, I use it for powder. Okay, so that is everything. I'm also gonna to try to do mostly a full face of Patrick Ta, because last year around the holidays, I purchased, well, I purchased this, which I have barely used. I used it last night though, because um, I knew I was doing this video and I wanted to play around with them. And then I also have this eyeshadow palette that I've maybe used less than 10 times. So we're going to do that too. So let's go ahead and open this up. I got the shade Light 1, which let me look on the website. For some reason, I thought it was supposed to be like olive. Uh, let's look here. It's golden neutral. They do have an olive shade, but that they don't get into their olive shades until they get to light medium one, which looked way too dark for me. Um, yeah, so you don't get an olive until you get this dark. So I'm gonna to have to go golden today. So this may not even be a good shade for me. And here we have it. So, I mean, that might be okay for me. And let's just go ahead and, you know what, I'll do a finger swatch to kind of get a feel for it. 
all right it actually looks somewhat shiny it doesn't look too drying so let's go ahead and start applying it actually this looks like it's gonna be a pretty decent shade um, I can tell now though I might have wanted to go this is a pretty small brush if for everyday use if I end up liking this I probably am going to want to use which it's dirty right now but this merit brush I use it all the time so just kind of working this in and I don't know if I'm not using enough it seems to be a little bit streaky like I don't know if you can tell like but maybe if I just really work it in it'll be less so it could also be because I'm using the smaller brush but this is about the size of the brush that they sell to go with it so that's interesting I have this little elf brush let's go in with that and see if it's a little bit better with just a bigger brush here even with all that skin prep I'm not really loving the way it looks on my skin. Like around my nose. I don't know how well you, if you can see that. It's kind of clinging a little bit and it is a little bit streaky. And I don't want to add more because I know it says it can be, it, you can build it up to like a medium coverage. But I don't really want to add a ton because then I'm afraid it'll just look dry or blotchy. But let's just go ahead kind of work it into the skin and see it also doesn't feel like it sets or sinks in again I prepped my skin quite a bit but I let that sit for a while this I feel like if I were to just put my finger on my face I would pick it right up I'm gonna to try to hold judgment let me just put it on the face <laughs> And I believe Patrick Ta is a makeup artist and I'm sure he probably put videos up on how he uses this and applies it. I didn't watch any of that and I haven't actually watched anybody else's reviews on this because I wanted to <laughs> not be swayed by anybody else's opinion. Because again, my, the whole purpose of my channel is I'm the average consumer and most people I know don't watch YouTube videos as much as I do, <laughs> like over every little product and every little thing. So if I were to go into a Sephora and they were to suggest this product to me, or if I were to see it and want to try it, I, you know, would obviously just kind of do what I would naturally do with it. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't have all that background information, which obviously the average consumer has access to it, but like, People don't have time <laughs> to look up every little product that they buy. And I didn't look, but the packaging didn't really have many instructions or anything. Let's see here. There's just ingredients. Let's see on the back. Directions, okay. Apply cream foundation to moisturize skin, building to desired coverage. Then apply translucent setting powder to oil prone areas concentrating on the t-zone for best results apply using patrick todd double ended complexion brush and this is supposed to have a luminous finish which i think is interesting that it's billed for oily skin when a lot of the times they're not going for luminosity because their skin is just naturally luminous they've got oil in their skin <laughs> so i think this is all i want to put on my skin i need to put like a concealer on yeah like I'm like let me see wait for that to focus if I just yeah it just wiped the foundation off so let me go back in and put my foundation back on so this foundation doesn't really set it just kind of stays kind of slippy maybe it just takes longer to set but definitely it didn't set on that side of my face and I still don't feel like the coverage is even. Like I feel like they're 
or areas, which I don't need everything to be covered, but I feel like if you look at it like right here, I feel like there's more there, like it's just kind of streaky. Because I don't mind for my skin to show through, but I do like the coverage to be even. So I'm only going to apply a little bit of like corrector and concealer around my eyes since I'm not putting the foundation there. But I'm not gonna use concealer anywhere else on my face because I just kind of wanna see how the rest of the products kind of work. So I'm gonna go in with this, well, I'm thinking that I need to use something that's kind of like a sort of like cream finish. Um, and I don't know if it's gonna mesh well, but I'm gonna go in with this NARS concealer just around my eyes. I'm gonna just use my pinky and kind of try to go in lightly to kind of correct and cover a little bit. Like right here. So I know people aren't wearing masks as much as they used to, but just from touching this on my face, I think that this foundation would drive you insane if you are a mask wearer still, or if like you still work in a doctor's office where you need to wear a mask all the time. Um, and I also feel like the mask would pick up the product. All right, and then I'm just gonna use whatever was left on my brush from the foundation to kind of like marry <laughs> this together without, um, it looking like too wild. So I think that looks okay. Like not the best. All right, so now we're gonna go in with the powder. And I'm just gonna put that, cause I say to put it in your oily areas. But so I guess for me, I'm gonna usually put it here. I don't like to look too greasy on the edges of the nose leading down to the smile lines. Um, Let's feel the texture of that. Okay, it's, it feels like a pretty thin sort of powder. So I'm gonna put it here and like over the pores, like right here and under the eye. <laughs> this brush is like losing. <sighs> okay. Right there. And I'm gonna do my chin. Maybe my upper lip too, let's just, I don't like that to look sweaty. Okay, and then I'm gonna do right here. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good. I know that Patrick Ta has bronzers and all of that stuff, I don't have any. I may go back in after I do the blush and apply a bronzer. Um, but we'll just kind of see. So I typically use these two shades when I use this. Um, and I like to mix them a little bit. So I'm going to go in with the powder first because that's how he suggests that you use these, that you use the powder and then you put the cream over for luminosity. So I'm just going to hop in between these two guys and put on some blush. I'm gonna go real lightly because these are pretty pigmented and I'm just gonna kind of place it and then I'll come back in and blend. I'm gonna jump back in with the smaller brush that I started with. It should have a little bit on it and I'm just gonna kind of get the edges a little bit. And then I'm gonna hop in with the darker of the two and get plenty and then I'm going to kind of go between the fingers and kind of just pat it over top. And I think I have a lot of the foundation bunched right there. So I'm going to go in with the brush, the smaller one, and just try to see if that works. And I'm looking and my skin, like up close, this doesn't look too hot. <laughs> um, from a distance though, I'm like looking back, sitting back in the camera, and I'm 
And I was like, oh, that's not so bad. But then I get really up close with the mirror and it's, I feel like it's just sitting on top of my skin. So, okay, let's go in with the eyeshadow palette. And I'm gonna do something very simple. And I first wanna go in with this shade right here. Like a nice bone shade with a little bit of sparkle in it. Um, did I get, yeah. I'm gonna hop in now with this color right next to it that's kind of like a yellowed kind of tan khaki shade and just kind of put that on the outer corner and then just using the same color I'm gonna go under the eye a little bit and then I'm gonna hop in to this shade and then just kind of stamp it right here on the outer area okay and then that is good enough for my color makeup I'm gonna jump off camera do my lashes my brows maybe add a little tiny bit of bronzer and we'll be back to look at the final look and I think I'm actually I've got some stuff to do today so we may do like a little bit of a wear test and I always find that even though I use this camera that's like super expensive I think it might be the lighting in here I always find that when I'm out and about and I take like close up selfies or videos like close on the skin um, that in the natural lighting outside with my iPhone that you can like really see the things that sometimes I point out here on the camera that like you may not notice. Like let me zoom in really quick and I'll kind of show you. So this is the skin before I add anything. And I always, I feel like it's already like breaking up on my nose. I don't know if you noticed that. I mean, from far away, I think this foundation looks good because it does seem to have a little bit of that luminosity to it. Um, like, I think the skin from far back looks good, but then up close, it's a, it seems a little bit streaky. But anyway, I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished my makeup. It took me a while to get my brows somewhat decent. Um, but I noticed that when I was doing my mascara, I kind of always like look down and kind of like raise my brows and I didn't powder a whole lot up here. Well, I've also already noticed a couple of things, but we'll see if it settles. So I noticed that when I raised my brows, all of the foundation went in my forehead lines, which I don't have like super prominent forehead lines, but they look way more, um, like you can kind of see the foundation has just settled in those lines. It just sits on top and it's just kind of gone into every single line. Like, and typically foundations don't do that. <laughs> That's not something I've ever really, I maybe experienced it here and there, but it's not something I'm like usually self-conscious of. So what I am going to do, I am going to take the brush that I use to apply the foundation. If I can find it, I set it down. I don't know where I set it down. I'm gonna take the brush and then just kind of like go over that and see if that kind of blends it out and then hopefully it is fine for the rest of the day. But I also did notice around my upper lip where I decided to powder because I didn't want it too sheeny. Um, adding powder over this foundation makes it look cakey. So the powder that comes with it, like you see my upper lip? It looks really dry and then the chin where I powdered also like it just doesn't look good it looks very like dry and kind of like crepey around those areas and I moisturized a ton like you can see on the rest of my face where I had moisturized and it still does look a little bit patchy in areas too so, I mean, also, I am somebody who, <laughs> this foundation isn't made for me, but I, and from far away, like looking, my face looks fine. Just like when you get up close and you kind of see those things, and that's not typically something I deal with. But I am going to run out and run some errands today, clean up the house, and I'll take some photos maybe while I'm out and about doing stuff, and I will insert them here.
Okay, so the first thing I wanna point out about the foundation is right here. And Angel, you can zoom in on this. You got it, you got it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's visible. Yeah, okay, so now you can zoom back out, okay. So the foundation is already like cracking on my face. I already took it back. I knew this is not something that I'm going to use. But also, while I was taking back foundations, I stopped into Ulta because I I think during my uh, haul video, I had showed you guys the Fenty foundation and told you I was just going to return it because it looks so bad on the skin. And so I went in to return it, and I was looking because Lancome came out with a new kind of like more hydrating, glowy foundation. And so I was interested in that. However, when they came out with the new foundation, they consolidated their shade range. And so my shade is no longer there, which I am a light olive shade. So the worker there, I guess, was trying to school me. And she was like, well, then just get a, a yellow shade um, because olive is just dark yellow. And no, it's not because if it were dark yellow, then I would just get a yellow foundation and a deeper shade. Olive is has a little bit of blue mixed in with the yellow to kind of counteract it, kind of counteract it, and it's literally a light green. There's an olive tint to it. So then she told me that she chose a foundation and she said this would be the best shade for me. Um you got that, Ansley? Uh-huh. So this is what an Ulta employee just matched to my skin. <laughs> so when you guys go into a store, and I see this all the time when I see people putting on makeup um, in their videos, and they're like, this is what this employee matched me with. And then it looks crazy. <laughs> it, most of the time, very rarely do I see like a good match because she didn't actually oh, even sorry. take, what'd you do? Uh, I actually like wet finger in front. Oh, that's okay. She didn't even actually like take the time to like look at my face or anything. She's like, oh, well you needed an olive, this is it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let you know that this shade she chose, that's not olive anyway, <laughs> that's orange. <laughs> and that is the shade that she wants me to put on my face. So don't listen to them when they color match you or don't buy as soon as they color match you without putting in any effort. Um, most people know their skin tone better than some associate in a store. And just go ahead, ask for some samples if they'll give them, and check them out. Also, I do wanna mention the Ulta's lighting is such that they use a lot of soft box lighting in the store, but the store is not well lit. So when she swatched this on my arm, Ansley said, oh yeah, that looks pretty close, that doesn't look so bad because the store is so dim that you can't even tell like how bad of a match it is. And I'm like, no, Ansley, like this isn't good. Just wait till we walk outside. We walk outside and I showed her this and, and that's the thing is they, they're like, oh, this is the closest match to you. No, your lighting just sucks and you don't know color theory. But anyway, like I'm not mad or anything. I, I knew better, but again, a lot of these places, these people are not makeup artists. They don't understand color theory and they're just trying to sell you product, which I don't understand why they're so pushy in Ulta because I'm like 99% sure they don't get commission. So I don't know why she was trying to push this color off on me. Like girl. But anyway, we're running into TJ Maxx now. And I guess my final thoughts on this foundation on my face, because I just went on a rant. Um, it does not look good. It cracks on my face. Um, it sits on top of the skin. It goes into lines. It makes me look way older. And when I was looking back at the footage earlier also, one of their claims is that it's good for pores. So I'm not somebody with large pores, but I looked back at the video and Ansley's back there giggling. Are you zooming in on my pores right now? No. Oh. <laughs> my pores looked enormous. And the, do my pores look big right now? Yeah, they look huge. Even like with the sleep. Like at uh, one times like magnification. Right, so this is not good for pores. Um, <laughs> is this car gonna hit me? No, they're not good, okay, great. So anyway, not good for pores. I look old, like every, like the lines in my face are exaggerated. I look tired. Um, I'm like looking in the mirror and I'm not happy about anything that's going on on my face right now. So I'm definitely gonna go home and wash this off when I'm done at TJ Maxx. But if I have anything good to show you at TJ Maxx, I guess I'll show you that too, but. This video is going awry.
All right, so I'm back home and I thought I would just give you my final thoughts on the foundation. I'm getting ready to go wash my face off. So obviously you could see from the other clips, I'm not super fond of the foundation. It just sits on top of the skin. It doesn't look quite right. Um, the areas that I powdered look a little bit cakey. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in. And like you can see like around my nose here, it's kind of gathered and it's kind of gathered in every line on my face and kind of makes me look older. Um, again, the lighting in here is favorable, but, and also like, I feel like iPhones are ruthless. Cause like right now, let me just take a photo. Um, take a selfie. I'm gonna turn this around. Okay, so you can kind of see my screen's filthy. Hold on. Okay. And I'm gonna just have the selfie that I just took on the screen. I feel like iPhones are a little bit more ruthless than <laughs> cameras like, you know, DSLR. Well, I have a mirrorless camera, it's not a DSLR. It doesn't matter. Anyway, they're a little bit more ruthless. Let me do the other side of my face. I feel like it's, okay. And then there's the other side of my face you can see on the screen. So yeah, but anyway, just going over the claims, my pores look bigger. I feel like this foundation kind of ages me a little bit. Um, in which, hey Ansley, yeah. who did you say the foundation made me look like? Emperor Palpatine. Who? Emperor Palpatine. I'll have it here on the screen for you. But Anthony says that that's what I look like. So yeah, I'm not fond of it. Also like on my nose, I don't know if you can like see, it's like super dry and it was like separating on the nose and it was doing that pretty early. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not good. Oh, and then like here on my upper lip, I don't know if you can, Mm. It like collected here. It, it just looks wild. But here's what I will say. My forehead area, after I kind of blotted it out the first time, and now that like over time I've gotten a little bit more oily, it's, I think it looks more like skin but it doesn't look good. So I think if you wear it over time, it might settle in and look a little bit better, but in the areas where you don't naturally produce a lot of oil, like say, which I produce oil on my chin though, and I'm like looking closely, and it still looks bad there. But on my forehead, it looks okay. And I think that's also because I only powdered a little bit here which actually it doesn't look, the powder does not look good with the foundation, at least on my skin. So again, I'm gonna preface this, not really preface, I'm ending it by saying that this foundation is, they say is made for um, oily skin, combination skin, or normal skin. I do, I would say I'm more normal to dry, but they did say, uh, at least the Sephora employee had said that if you use moisturizing primers, that it should be fine. Um, but I moisturized the heck out of my face before starting and this just is not wearing well. It doesn't look good. So I don't know. Try it. If you have oily skin, let me know if it works for you. Let people in the comments know because I don't want to just discount a product entirely based off of my skin, but it just didn't really work well for me. So that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, I'm going to go wash my face. I think I'm going to film another video and, um, that's it. So hope you all have a great day and I'll talk to you later. I think I need a minute to figure out